The first, uh, the first case this morning um, to be heard is PRC 2014 0011, uh, Midtown at Clear Creek filing number five. Um, and Michael, I'll let you uh, take okay. that. Okay, sounds good, thank you. This is a request for a final development plan to allow 96 lots on approximately 17.4 acres in the PUD planned unit development zone district. A request for a major subdivision preliminary final plat to create 96 lots, again on 17.4 acres, and a subdivision improvement agreement for filing number five. The 183 acre Midtown site is bordered by Clear Creek and industrial land to the south, residential land to the north, and vacant land to the east and to the west, and Pecos Street bisects the Midtown site. The site is zoned PUD planned unit development. Nearby parcels are zoned PUD, R1C and R2 residential, C3 commercial, and I1, I2, and I3 industrial. The filing number five area is approximately 17.4 acres in size, located in the eastern portion of the larger Midtown development area east of Pecos Street. Midtown filing number five includes two different home types, a single family detached rear loaded cottage home, there are approximately 84 of these homes. They range from 1,650 to 2,850 square feet in size, as well as single family detached front loaded homes. There are 12 of these types of homes and they range in size from 1,800 square feet to 2,200 square feet. All builders and homeowners are required to go through the design review committee. Alleys will be used to access garages and parking for most of the homes. Each rear loaded home will have a minimum of two off street parking spaces. All homes have access to on street parking along the local streets. There are approximately 4.6 parking spaces per dwelling unit in filing number five. The filing number five area includes streetscape landscaped areas and landscaped tracks. In addition, there is a temporary detention pond for stormwater runoff for the portion of filing number five that is tributary to the pond. Once the ultimate detention pond is constructed within filing number seven, this temporary pond and associated infrastructure will be removed. Lot sizes range from 2,560 square feet to 4,875 square feet for the 96 lots in this area. All front, side, and rear setbacks will be consistent with the Second Amendment to the preliminary development plan. Side yard use easements are granted along common side lot lines only on detached single family home lots. The estimated length of time for full build out of the filing number five area of Midtown is seven years. On November 6, 2014, the Adams County Board of County Commissioners approved a pre plat SIA for Midtown filing number five prior to approval of the FDP and final plat applications. This approval was granted to allow the developer to begin construction of certain public improvements for street construction, dry utilities, storm drainage, and other site improvements prior to final plat approval and at the developer's risk. The current application for the FDP and preliminary final plat includes an addendum to the above referenced SIA for filing number five. This addendum outlines the developer's obligation for landscape installation, landscape ownership and maintenance, and public land dedication fees for schools and parks for this phase of the development. The Colorado Division of Water Resources opines that the proposed water supply is adequate and can be provided without causing injury and notes that any existing exempt production wells within filing number five must be re-permitted. The applicant states that it is not aware of any existing wells within filing number five and that all monitoring wells that have been or will be abandoned will be done so per state standards. Excel Energy notes that the developer must complete the application process for any new natural gas or electric service and request Midtown to maintain the easement whiffs utilized in the previous Midtown filings, and the applicant takes note of this comment. The Colorado Geological Survey notes that the filing five area does not present any geologic hazards or development constraints that would preclude the proposed use and density. The applicant will follow the recommendations of its preliminary geotechnical study. The Tri-County Health Department and the City of Westminster have no comments. Here's a view looking northeast into the Filing 5 area. This picture was taken from Pecos Street. Here's a view looking north along Pecos Street. Filing 5 area would be off to the right. Here's a view looking south along Pecos Street. The Filing 5 area would be to your left. Here's a view looking uh, directly west across Pecos Street. And here's a view looking southeast into the filing five area. 
This proposal is consistent with the overall development plan and the second amendment to the preliminary development plan. The filing number five FDP area includes two types of single family detached homes and maintains the traditional neighborhood concept with its grid form and rear loaded product types and the inclusion of open space tracks and landscaped tree lawns. Staff supports a mixed use pedestrian friendly environment fostered by filing number five. This case was heard on November 13th, 2014 by the Planning Commission, which recommended approval in a unanimous decision. There were no citizen comments during the public hearing. The Planning Commission did not have any concerns with the applicant's request. Planning Commission and staff recommend approval of the requests with 20 findings of fact and four notes. And this concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions for staff? No. No questions for staff. Would the applicant like to make a statement? Please state your name and ad address for the record, please. Good morning. I'm uh, John Warnick with Brookfield Residential. Um, our address is 6465 South Greenwood Plaza Boulevard, Centennial, Colorado, 80111. Um, I have uh, no comments, but I'm here to answer any questions if you have them. Um, I'm, this is our, we haven't, it's not like we haven't been here that much for this property, so uh, <laughs> if you have any questions. Do you have any questions for the applicant? No, very familiar. <laughs> Indeed. With the project. Thank okay. you very much. I don't think there's any questions okay. right now. All right, thank you. Okay. Okay. Do we have a motion? Um, I move for the approval. Yes. Yep. I, I'm sorry. I, I don't wait. believe there's anyone here for public comment, but can you ask? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Is there anyone in the audience that would like to make public comment on this subject? Seeing none, do we have a motion? Okay, a motion. Approval with 25 findings of fact and four notes. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Item um, number two is actually the the same PRC 2014 0011 uh, Mid Creek at Clear Creek filing number five. It's a subdivision improvement agreement. And Michael, you want to speak to that? Uh, yeah. So I referenced uh, the subdivision improvement agreement, the addendum. So we simply just need a motion at this point. All right. Can I no, I'm going to ask. Does the applicant want to make a statement on that? No? Okay. Anyone in the public would like to make a statement on this? Seeing none, do I have a motion? I move for its approval. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Next. Next, um, next case to be heard is PRC 2014-00010, and it's KMGG uh, Brighton Connect Pipelines. And uh, Michael, do you want to speak to this? Thank you. This is case number PRC 2014-10. This is the Kiramigi Gathering or KMGG Brighton Connect Pipelines. This is a request for one, a conditional use permit for an eight inch natural gas condensate pipeline along East 128th Avenue from the Brighton Compressor Station located just to the northwest of East 128th Avenue in Powhatan Road to an existing valve station located approximately one quarter mile west of Piccadilly Road as well as a request for a conditional use permit for a 10 inch natural gas pipeline along Piccadilly Road from wells located approximately three quarters of a mile south of East 128th Avenue to an existing natural gas pipeline located along East 128th Avenue. The Brighton Compressor Station currently has an existing 10 inch natural gas condensate pipeline that runs west for approximately three and a half miles before veering north via an eight inch natural gas condensate pipeline into Weld County. In order that the entire natural gas condensate line be a consistent diameter, Kiramigi plans on constructing an eight inch natural gas condensate pipeline for those three and a half miles along East 128th Avenue. The existing 10 inch natural gas condensate pipeline along East 128th Avenue would then be converted into a natural gas pipeline and would be connected by a new 10 inch natural gas pipeline coming up from the south along Piccadilly, Piccadilly Road connecting the Bill Barrett wells to the Brighton compressor station. Uh, and this map we see in red the location of the eight inch natural gas condensate pipeline and in yellow the location of the 10 inch natural gas pipeline. 
The eight inch natural gas condensate pipeline would run along East 128th Avenue for three and a half miles, and the 10 inch natural gas pipeline would run along Piccadilly Road for about three quarters of a mile. Parcels along the routes are zoned A3 Agricultural and DIA Denver International Airport. The three alignment options put forth by the applicant for the eight inch natural gas condensate pipeline all roughly parallel East 128th Avenue, which runs east to west. The three alignment options put forth by the applicant for the 10 inch natural gas pipeline run along Piccadilly Road, Gun Club Road, and East 128th Avenue. The proposed project is imperative for the transport of natural gas and natural gas condensate to processing and are an extension of Kermagee's existing pipeline network in the area. The natural gas pipeline will deliver products to its Brighton compressor station located at East 128th Avenue and Powhatan Road. The gathering lines will be placed in private right-of-way easements negotiated with the surface owners. The applicant has worked to locate new easements adjacent to existing ones and has situated the pipelines in such a way as to avoid conflicts with existing utilities, right of way, and infrastructure, and has worked to locate new easements adjacent to existing or planned future corridors. The applicant states that operation of the pipeline would not produce any nuisances. Kiermiki states that the proposed project will be a privately financed pipeline. The applicant states that the limited and temporary impact to farming operations may occur during construction of the project and will work with landowners to mitigate all impacts. The applicant does not expect any permanent or post-construction impacts. The applicant communicates and plans with local emergency responders and immediately dispatches trained personnel to work with emergency responders upon the notification of an incident or leak. The applicant states that its operators are extensively trained to respond to an emergency to restore safe conditions for the public and to minimize impacts to the environment. The pipeline will be buried to a minimum depth of 48 inches, and in locations where such a burial depth is not achievable, additional mechanical protection will be provided. Where the route is adjacent to roadways, the pipeline will be located and constructed outside the boundaries of the anticipated future road right-of-way, so as not to interfere with future road development, and within the county's building setback boundaries so as to minimize interference with future private development. The project is expected to have minimal impact on terrestrial or aquatic animals or habitat under any of the three route options. The applicant will reclaim any lands disturbed during construction. Kiermagee confirms that compliance with air quality regulations will be maintained continuously throughout the project. Denver International Airport states that the proposed eight inch natural gas condensate pipeline does not interfere with any existing or proposed aeronautical development on DIA and does not object to the proposal. DIA notes that the preferred alignment of the proposed 10-inch natural gas pipeline does not impact airport property and has no objections to the preferred alignment. Alternative Route B is objectionable as it impacts airport property. And the applicant will update the FAA in the event its proposal changes and is working with DIA to finalize a license agreement with the airport. The City of Commerce City notes that the area of the proposed pipeline is included within the future growth area of Commerce City. It will be important to design the location of this pipeline to accommodate full build out of area roads and be in harmony with future building and property setbacks. The applicant met with Commerce City on September, on September 19th and is working with the city to ensure Kermagee's operations effectively accommodate the potential expansion of these roads. The Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment notes that all sources of potential construction and oil and gas projects that will produce air emissions in Colorado are required to obtain a construction or oil and gas permit. The applicant acknowledges these comments and confirms that compliance with air quality regulations will be maintained continuously throughout the project. The Colorado Division of Water Resources has no comments. The Tri-County Health Department recommends that the applicant address the need for any trash dumpsters and or portable toilets needed during construction and that any above ground valves be secured. The applicant states that construction dumpsters and portable toilets will be provided and will follow DOT classification guidelines for securing above ground valves. School District 27J has no objection to the project. Xcel Energy states that existing electric transmission lines and existing high pressure natural gas transmission pipelines and associated land rights cross the proposed pipeline routes and requests that prior to any final approval, the applicant contact Excel for development plan review and execution of a license agreement. 
and the applicant is indeed applying for a license agreement with Excel. History Colorado notes that there remains a possibility that historic and or prehistoric archaeological resources will be uncovered by the project. The applicant conducted a cultural resources field survey on October 13th. No cultural resources were identified. Kiermagee has agreed to enter into a development agreement as part of this application that will cover a number of issues such as pre-construction requirements, construction and operational standards, maintenance of the pipeline, referral agency comments, and consideration for future development. This agreement has been reviewed and approved by the Transportation Department, the Planning and Development Department, and the County Attorney's Office. Here's a view looking west along East 128th Avenue at Powhatan Road. Here's a view looking east along East 128th Avenue at Harvest Road. Here's a view looking east along East 128th Avenue at Piccadilly Road. Here's a view looking west along East 128th Avenue at Piccadilly Road. Here's a view looking north along Piccadilly Road at East 128th Avenue. Here's a view looking south along Piccadilly Road at East 128th Avenue. And here's a view looking southeast into the Bill Barrett Tank Battery site along Piccadilly Road. The project is compatible with the comprehensive plan and is in harmony with future roadway expansion plans. The application material submitted with this request was adequately detailed and provided sufficient documentation of the agency reviews of this project. The applicant has provided clear, detailed, and comprehensive information related to the environmental impact analysis, existing historic cultural resources, safety measures, and emergency response protocol, and related information to satisfy concerns raised by staff and referral agencies. This case was heard before the Planning Commission on November 13th, 2014. No public testimony was presented at the hearing. The Planning Commission asked the applicants to elaborate on the company's safety record, pipeline depth, the meaning of condensate, the pressure of the pipeline, and the cathodic protection to be utilized on the pipeline. The Planning Commission added a new recommended condition of approval that the applicant shall verify the depth of the existing 10-inch pipeline to be verified every 1,000 feet, and if the minimum depth of 48 inches is not achieved, then the applicant shall take appropriate measures to protect the pipeline. Staff notes that the Planning Commission had recommended three conditions of approval. However, one of those conditions simply directed the applicant to, to continue working with staff on the development agreement, which the applicant has done and which therefore is no longer needed as a condition of approval. In addition, the Planning Commission's recommended condition of approval regarding verification of depth of the existing 10-inch pipeline has been incorporated into the development agreement and therefore is no longer needed as a condition of approval. Staff recommends approval of the applicant's preferred alignments based on 33 findings of fact and one condition. And this concludes the staff report. Thank you very much. Questions? No questions. No questions. Would the applicant like to make a statement at this time? Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, Nathan Kaiser, Kermagee Gathering, 1099 18th, 18th Street, Suite 1800, Denver, Colorado, 80202. Uh, good morning. I'd like to thank you for hearing our case today. Uh, I've never presented to you guys before, so I'm happy to be here making an introduction. I'd also like to thank the planning staff for doing such a great job and kind of presenting the facts of our case. Uh, we've got a very talented team here today to answer any questions that you might have before the before we get to that, though, I'd like to just touch on something, uh, basically touch on why we need these projects. Um, so our, our 10 inch well connect, you know, as, as oil and gas come to the surface, they're separated at the surface at the wellhead. Natural gas needs to be put into our gathering system to help us deliver this to market. Um, the well connect is just exactly what it sounds like. It allows us to connect the well heads to our gathering system and deliver it. The eight inch condensate line is, as natural gas is transported via pipeline, it cools down the longer it goes, liquids drop out, and those liquids are then collected, typically stored inside a compressor station facility in above ground tanks. Our hope is to install a pipeline to deliver these to processing rather than unload and load at a truck loading facility. 
So we're trying to remove trucks off the road by installing this pipeline. So that being said, I'd like to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Do you sure. have any questions? Nope. No questions. I think I think just to let you know, I think that you know over the years, the last two years, I think we've been immersed in what these pipelines mean and and coming out of the oil and gas industry, you know, representing some agencies that way. I know a lot of the safety issues that you have when you truck, and I know that these are important and they're they're safety safeguards that we have to take in these. I am very glad to see that you're you know doing the air quality and you're doing all the safeguards and the depths and everything that you're doing. So I do appreciate that. This time I don't really have any questions for you. I just thank you for coming in and thank you for giving your presentation on your side. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So at this time, do we have anybody from the public that would like to make a comment on this? Seeing none, do we have a motion? Yes, I move for the approval of the applicant's preferred alignment for both the 8-inch natural gas pipeline and the 10-inch natural gas pipeline with 33 findings of fact and three conditions. I believe it would be one condition. Is that one condition? I thought the Planning Commission asked for three. They did, but it, they incorporated the other two into the presentation. Oh. Okay, never mind. With one condition. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. And the final item uh, pertaining to the specific project um, is the uh, development agreement associated with the uh, Cameron uh, Brighton Connect pipeline. Yes, yeah, staff does not have a separate presentation. Okay, I will ask again does the applicant wish to make a statement on this? None. Is there anyone in the public that would like to make a statement on this? Seeing none, do I have a motion? I move for the, its approval. Second. Commissioner Henry? Yes. Commissioner Tedesco? Yes. Thank you very much. That concludes our land use hearings and we are in adjournment. <laughs>